So again, all these points go by the axis, right? Like there's not a pi over four there. It's pi over two, 90, pi 183, pi over two, 270, okay? So when we plug in sine of zero, we're talking about the very first coordinate. Are we talking about the X or the Y part of that coordinate for sine? Y, the Y coordinate, so it's zero. At pi over two, that's this coordinate up here, and it's still sine, so are we talking about zero or one? We're talking about one, okay? So you just follow the pattern from there. At pi, right, because the angle is there, okay, we're talking about the Y value, which would be zero. Then three pi over two, which is 270, we're talking about the Y value, which is negative one. And then at 360, we're talking about the y value, which would be zero. So again, should you make it like this? Yes or no? No. No, it's got the nice wave shape to it. Um, again, it looks more like this. Full hill, full valley. What's a full hill and a full valley make together? One period. Good job. So I'm actually going to go left as well. If I went negative pi over 2, okay, that output is negative 1, so I'm going to come down. If I went negative pi, that output is zero, so I'm going to come up to pi. If I went negative 270, that output is one, so I'm going to go up to one, and then negative 360, it would go to zero, so it should look something like this. Again, hopefully this feels um, doable after we've been doing it for about a week and a half, okay? That same concept is going to work for sine, or sorry, for cosine. It should look something like this. Sometimes when I backspace, it like moves my points. I don't know why. So for cosine, the first y value, sorry, the first x value, yeah. It starts up at 1. When I said uh, the first value, I'm talking about the coordinate 1, yep. And then it comes down to 0. Khalil's right, he starts up, and it looks like this. Again, it is not a V right? It is a wave. Cosine's a little bit more confusing because it's half of a hill to start, then a full valley, but then that hill gets completed over there, so you've got your full period, all right? If you worked your way left, again, uh, negative pi over 2 gets you right there, and that y value is, um, sorry, the x value, because we're talking about cosine, 0, Negative 180 or negative pi gets you back over to negative 1. Negative 270 gets you at an x value of 0. And then negative 360 or negative 2 pi gets you up at 1 again. So it should look something like this. <clears throat> now, do we remember the relationship between sine and cosine and tangent? Do we remember that relationship between sine, cosine, and tangent? Other way. So tangent is also equal to the sine value, sine of theta divided by the cosine value, cosine of theta. Okay? That's what the relationship is. And so um, we can actually take these uh, graphs. I, I tried to be intentional. I lined it up perfectly so that you can see what happens when you divide those y values, okay, those outputs. So the very first point, if I start at like zero, the output of sine is zero. What's the output of cosine at that same point? One. So what are you going to divide for tangent? Zero over one. What's zero divided by one? Zero. Zero divided by one is zero, so you're going to have a big dot at zero. Then pi over two. You're going to do one divided by what? Zero. Divided by zero. What's one divided by zero? Undefined. When you get that for tangent, what you've got is you've got a vertical asymptote. The first vertical asymptote moving that way is at pi over two. Okay? Okay. If we work our way over to pi, again, I'm trying to line this up perfectly. Sorry, my screen's not getting the whole thing in there. At pi, it's zero 
the output is negative one. What is zero divided by negative one? Zero. So you're going to also have a dot at tangent right here. At three pi over two, you're going to have another asymptote. Then you're going to have an asymptote, every other vertical line in this graph. And you're going to keep having dots right there. But tangent's not just a dot, right? If you were able to graph more of it, this vertical asymptote pattern will continue in both directions. And this people, I need about 30 more seconds. Oh, shoot. If you did something like pi over four, right? The tangent of pi over four is one. So the graph looks something like this. It's going to get really, really close to that asymptote. It's going to go up forever. The tangent of negative pi over four is a negative one. It's going to come down forever like this. And that same picture is going to continue forever and ever. Tangent is pretty tough to deal with. It's going to look like this. Okay. Hopefully that's making some sense. Quick intro for tangent.